but that's okay. First, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Leo Mehan, who recommended me to uh, give me an opportunity here to share with you uh, our experiences of the cell, in the cell therapy. Stem Side is a corporate banking company, the base business corporate banking. We have a, a, over 2,000 transplants, successful transplants in the Copla. But now we are using the Copla as a raw material and concentrate to the monocyte to treat the spinal cord injury, chronic stroke, and many other neurological disorders. Okay, let me, let me see how to do this. Okay. okay. Uh, the brief outlines here. Very quick, I go through this, the, the, the cell therapy attack. Many uh, stem cells therapy has been mentioned by Rita and many other presenters. So, regulatory status, and uh, I think uh, the CAR T is one of the cell therapy, uh, very famous one. Okay, and then we're talking about immunotherapy uh, revolution. Uh, that's another cell therapy. Okay. And, uh, Brief described the challenge of the industrialization of the cell therapy and cell therapy product uh, strategy and then stem cell experience. Okay, uh, this chart actually is developed by the alliances of the regenerative medicine in the US. So, what we're talking about is basically the, uh, the left hand side, the cell therapy cell basis immun immunotherapy and stem cell therapy. Cell therapy is the backbone of the regenerative medicine, um, using the living cells to replace damaged and diseased cells and tissues, induce an endogenous immune responses to deliver genetic and molecular therapy to targets. All the others I'm not going to mention about it, but the cell therapy is a big, big, you know, part of the, the regenerative medicine. This just tell you how many companies are working on the cell therapy. 843 uh, regenerative medicine. Mostly in North America. And Europe has a 234 and Asia has 128. So it's a very hot area. A lot of research. And just of the kind of a trial uh, in the regenerative medicine, they have 934. And most of them are in the phase one, and there are a few, uh, 979 in the phase three. <coughs> but you look at the bottom part, as you can see, 53% are doing the oncology, like leukemia, lymphoma, cancers. And 10% do the cardiovascular disorders. 6% do in the central nerve systems. And we are the 6% because the neuro, we believe the neuro, <coughs> the neuro disorders, um, it, it's a good target for uh, the material with uh, monocyte from the uh, umbilical cord. We only use umbilical cord blood as a raw material. We don't do other embryonic stem cells. We don't do IPS. Yet we think this is a minimum manipulated and no expansion. Uh, we don't want to create a new drug. We create and the type of stem cell, I highlight the middle part, embryonic, everybody knows that induced pre stem cells. It's a very famous one. And the adult stem cell, they are the umbilical cord blood and the mesenchymal cell. The mesenchymal cell is a big category. The umbilical cord blood, although it's been categorized as a multipotent, however, it does have a different feature from the other adult stem cell. It's a hematopoietic stem cell and a progenitor. Those two unique features make the umbilical cord blood a very good sources for uh, regenerative uh, medicine.
And as you know, the embryonic stem cell is differentiate, then renew, then renew and expansion, and then differentiate to a different type of cells. And when you go to the adult stem cells, like uh, adult stem cells as umbilical cells, normally uh, the capability of differentiation will drops. They only do the renew. And then the IPS just turn it around, turn the somatic cells back to the embryonic uh, like stem cells so can, they can differentiate to the other cells. Regulatory status has been mentioned several times by Dr. Tang and by Rita and many other speakers. So a quick go through it. Basically, uh, has a, has a much more proof drugs since uh, 2012. Uh, before that, there's not, no, nothing. And more than 2,500 uh, 2, regional medicine clinical trials were going. And uh, the third therapy, the new regulatory policy, Japan is the first one, 2014, South Korea, 2016, and U.S. Uh, is 2017. As a new policy, give a condition approval, uh, you know, speedy reviewing process. So those are really encourage the cell therapy uh, product development. Market potential, uh, you know, everybody know it. The by 2022, going to go over 30 billion. Okay, so who will pick this? North American will be the big. Biggest growth, the 32.5 percent of uh, company annual growth rate, uh, and Europe will be 31.2. Asia will grow 39.9 percent. So it's a, it's one of the big uh, speedy uh, growing uh, industry. Now, Carty, the worst mention, everybody mentioned Carty, but Carty is really indeed. Now, this is already approved for most of the uh, umbilical cobola uh, transplantations. Uh, in, 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 they consider the umbilical cobola transplantation also a cell therapy. Okay. And using umbilical cobola to, uh, to do clinical trial, there are over 1,500. Uh, 762 trials are using umbilical cobola to do clinical trial for different kinds of indications. And uh, 667 trials using mesenchymal cells, 110 using tissues, umbilical tissue. So umbilical cord blood and tissue is a big resources for research. There's a reason for that. Okay, I'll explain that. I don't want to mention mesenchymal cells, but the mesenchymal is, it doesn't, it's an immune privilege, so there's no rejection. So you can do a lot of things. But they do have a weakness. The challenge is that it, the differentiation to the different cells uh, is limited. It is limited, OK? And the expansion of cells, normally in the culture, uh, is a time consuming. And it's not as powerful as the uh, uh, embryonic stem cell uh, cells. But it's still, you know, a lot of research ongoing. But uh, mostly uh, in the cosmetic, the wound care, and also cartilage, the bone repair area, which is not only a rejection is not a problem, but it has a cell regrowth in the area. This is the late stage, uh, you know, the, the, the pipeline. Yeah. But a lot of already failed, so like, uh, you know, Osiris therapy, you know, the same kind of cell, they all failed. Okay. 2017 marks the first year that regenerative medicine is disrupted healthcare, and already mentioned by Rita, I think, 2017, August, <coughs> Novartis, they make the history as the first company to win the FDA approval. And then Thai followed that October 27th, the big news. 
but the, you know, the, the original mechanism of the, is a living cell. It's not a dead drug. It's a living cell going to the body and be engineered with a GPS system. So for it, it's a car, chimeric uh, activated uh, antigen uh, receptor. So what I'll go in, take it, the TCR and expand it, and engineer with the car, and then go in, expand it, and go into the body and kill the cancers. Another story, another news is uh, need to be mentioned. In 2013, there's a big news. This is immunotherapy revolution. This is a breakthrough of the year for 2013. This is a in, discovered by Dr. Gordon Freeman. It's a very interesting. He discovered there's a checkpoint. Uh, there's a checkpoint of a plaquette. And the T cell normally go in and find cancers and try to kill cancers. But a cancer is smart. Cancer is using a protein. It's a membrane protein called a PD-L1 uh, protein. And that will fool the, the T cell. So T cell Will, will be fooled by this, 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 this uh, protein and will miss the cancer. So if you find a blocker, the checkpoint, you know, block it, to block that uh, PDL1, uh, the PD1. <coughs> and then the cell, then T cell comes in, they will recognize the cancer and will kill the cancer. There's a, there's a big story behind this. That's why it becomes very successful. The former president Jimmy Carter has a you know melanoma. It's a terminal stage the melanoma. And he has tried all the others, but they all failed. But he tried this PD dash one inhibitor. You know, he tried that and he's successful, totally cancer free. And uh, of course it is expensive. But once the news come out uh, uh, the twenty 2013 becomes a science of breakthrough of the year. And of course, President Carter is a famous person. Make this a very famous. And right after that, the, all the money comes in. The Facebook the CEO put 250 million for research, cancer, CAR T research. And uh, Daniel Ludwig is a very famous ship uh, magnet, is a very, very wealthy. He has a foundation, donate 540 million cancer research. And this is the Nike, the co-founder, for the field night, donate 500 million. So the cancer research on college become very big. There's so much money coming in because of the PDL1. So worth mentioning about. Now we're talking about the challenge of the industrial foundation of the cell therapy. Okay. It is different from biopharmaceutical. This is the living cells go into the body, not the dead product. I highlight with the red uh, make the, to show the differences. The product definition for the cell therapy would define the product through trial. Most of the cell therapy is a mixture. You really have to go find out. It's very difficult to, to target, which is the active, really active product. So it's a, but for the uh, biopharmaceuticals, it will, will define. The process of scale. When you make the bath pharmaceutical, you make 10,000, you got 1 million uh, injectable for tablets, that's one batch. But for the cell therapy, every lot, every unit is one batch because they're different DNA from the other batch. So a lot of documentation. Because we've been started doing the umbilical cochlear transplant. So we and used to the, those uh, uh, documentation. It's very, very tedious. And do the phase trial, do the phase one trial or phase two trial, you cannot <laughs> use a healthy, healthy people to do the kind of trial. You have to use the patient. And we do spinal cord injury patient trial. We have to use a spinal cord injury patient. So this is quite different. And the challenge here, there are many challenges, of course, you know, very much. But another big challenge, I put a number two highlighted, is it, uh, it, uh, you know, the storage, shipping, and the packaging. And uh, 
Now we, we process the product to a monocyte from a blue copper, and then ship the product, we process it in the United States. And we ship the product to China to, to treat its final reagent to demonstrate we have developed a, a process. We can overcome the, the shipping. We can ship that. As long as you use it within five days, it's still active. So that's a challenge. And we overcome that to, to, to deliver the product. So we make the, we make the social process turn that to a product. The third therapy product strategy, okay, I think this is just the, if we want to share with you the experiences, what we have both gone through. You really have to come up with the concept, design, understand the, the mechanics of action, and try to develop a cost efficient, a high quality manner. But it's very difficult to be cost efficient, it's very expensive. Allogenic, genic, and autologous. Most of the CAR T therapy are autologous. If you can develop a, a way to turn the autologous to an allogenic, you, you will benefit more patients. The autologous on a patient, the patient, one patient. And you can combine the, uh, the CAR drug design with the other drug to reduce the you know, to keep a long-term remission. That's another possibility. Uh, you need a strong preclinical data a proven clinical concept and have a noble design uh, feature, okay? And you have to find a way to protect your technology, to develop you know, the five pattern. And the pattern will cover many, many perspectives, including storage, including pension, including expansion, including purification. You have to find a way to protect your product. And the team expert expertise to expedite the profile and service product. You got it, you need a strong team. Research team to develop that. Um, I just mentioned about organic versus autologous. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, Rita also mentioned about it, it's obvious. And I'm not going to mention so many things, but I think the mechanism of action is a very important one. From our experiences uh, and many other research experience now, the mechanism of action of cell therapy uh, has been shipped. It's a major paradigm shift. It's called a par paracrine hypothesis. In the past, we think the the, the living cells will go into the target tissue and will integrate it structurally with the tissue and the regenerate from this. But from our experiences, apparently, we feel paracrine process is, is probably the, 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 the right you know, mechanism of action, which is uh, the cell going into <coughs> the tissue and then we release the bowel molecules, like a growth factors, like a neuron regeneration factors, or uh, the nutrients, to foster the endogenous, you know, uh, repairing mechanism and repair. So that and regenerate from there. So it's really the the pericard, the, the chemokine and uh, many, many, you know, gross factors. That's the one we call the regenerate. And at the end, I want to share with you stem cell experiences, some of the regulatory experiences. Uh, Dr. Shimosaka just mentioned about, we do have experience about FDA asked us to do animal study. And using human, we inject the human monocyte into the uh, immunocompromises, right? Uh, it's very tough, but we go through it. Spinal cord injury is the first project I want to share with you. And this is just showing you, you know, Alberto Cova has two uh, portions. One hematopoietic stem cells. The second one is a non-hematopoietic. We are focused on the hematopoietic stem cell. And our technology basically is uh, 
uh, mononuclear cell isolated from uh, you know, umbilical cord blood. The minimum manipulated, no expansion, no gene transcription, no closure. High availability, high regenerative power, and high quality. Uh, we do have a patent protection for all the process we do. If you go to a textbook, see what kind of the cell, stem cell, this is very similar to peripheral blood. And peripheral blood, basically all the stem cells, uh, hematopoietic stem cells, uh, is very similar, almost identical to peripheral blood. The only difference is there is the monocyte. The monocyte here in the umbilical cord blood is 10 times, could be 10 more times. We, from our experience, it's 10 times more than the peripheral blood. And that is a big, major difference. Joe Hersberg, who is one of our pioneers, also discovered the same thing, so we'll discuss that. And so our model nuclear cells contain the monocyte from empirical copa. And empirical copa then express to you know, microphage, 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 and to the chemokine, all the other uh, biomolecules come out from there. And then the way we, d we deliver our products, we go straight to the disease side. Like spinal cord, uh, we open up the spinal and inject directly to the spinal cord. For the brain, we open up the hole, goes to the direct inject there. Because if you, in, if you infuse the monocytes through the, the intravenous, uh, probably less than 5% will go to your brain, but even lower. You will have some go in, but it will be very low. But here we have almost 100% goes in. So we have very high concentrated stem cell. Bottom, because it goes into the spinal cord. So we call this as a targeted therapy for neurological disorder. And this is the paper published 2014 by a Canadian group of Canadian scientists. They find out that CD14, which is in general considered as a monocyte, uh, is uh, the potency and the capability is the reverse proportional to your age. So, like uh, from elderly, from 80 years old to 100 years old, those already have some kind of diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia, um, some kind of older. Their CD45, CD45 is a glucoside. Glucoside is basically all the glucoside together. Uh, the young, for the adult is from 19 to 59, the, the number is higher two times higher than those elderly. And the ceiling is between 61 to 75. It's right in between. Okay. And then go to the CD14, which is a classic monocyte. Okay. The same thing, show the same thing. Classic, you show the same thing. Intermediate and non-classic doesn't show much different. But a classic mononuclear <coughs> monocyte, you know, CD14, it really showed the same thing. So this is the result. This is the paper. You can find out the original paper. Yeah. You mentioned about it. When you get old, the, you have fewer CD14, classic monocyte. Uh, you have, uh, but not the CD14, not the uh, uh, non-traditional. Intermediate is a little bit higher, but the most difference is still in the uh, traditional uh, CD14. And basically, the frequency of monocyte express the chemo uh, kind, the receptor, CCR2 and CX2, 3, CR1. So basically, this is kind of the CD14 uh, is really is one of the key factor, biomarkers for you know, the, uh, the, the, the diseases. So when we inject the monocyte back there, can regenerate that. That could be the reason of the re regeneration. This is another paper uh, I, by an Italian, I think it's an Italian researcher. We showed a CD35 cells in human and clinical core, and clinical express nerve growth factor. 
a specific receptor, um, you know, uh, this is called a tryptophycine receptor kinase A, known as a high affinity nerve growth factor receptor. The CD30, CD34 has the highest in expression to the TRKA and uh, neural growth factor expression. CD34 and Pernacopa is better, much more powerful than the Cobra mono, uh, mononuclear cell. And then even higher than the peripheral blood mononuclear cell. So Pernacopa does have some unique features compared to the others. So it's a newborn, it's not been contaminated by the environment. So it has a lot of power. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go through the stem side uh, experiences. And Dr. Weisier did a clinical trial in China and using, open up the spinal cord and inject uh, the, uh, uh, the monocyte, mononuclear cell into the patient's spine damage side spinal cord and this is the result for spinal cord injured patients there are five there are five symptoms the first one is immobility they cannot walk second one they cannot urine they cannot pee and third one they cannot poop and fourth one is uh, very painful the upper body was dragged to the bottom part and the fifth one is they have no sex and if you look at the result, 75% of the patient after the treatment and the rehab, 75% they can stand up and walk. 60% among those 75%, there are 60% of them, uh, 12 patients of them, they can pick themselves and see what they can put themselves. And they don't, they don't have any pain. So, but we didn't ask it for sex. So in, we are now you know, applying US FDA for phase two, FDA acceptors to the phase two. And basically, we're gonna ask it all the five now. This is five. This is the clinical outcome for you know, And FDA like that. FDA never see the clinical outcome like this. And this is a published paper, so you can find it published uh, 2016 in cell transplant patients. And you can see the nerve start growing at the beginning, and later you can see the start growing, exome regeneration. I mean, this is just one case. Uh, this is FDA we submitted, phase two, um, basically spinal brain injury. Uh, the same thing right there. And we meet with FDA, like uh, Dr. Tan suggested, we have a pre meeting with FDA. And they request us to do animal study, which is uh, and very tough. They insist that we have to do an animal study, even though we have a very safe human study, but they still say you have to do it. So and you have to do it in a GLP. So that's even worse. You have to pay a lot of money. But we're lucky we to find a very good GLP. So they, those are the requests from FDA. And you have to uh, control group. Or clear apart, so we agree, and you have to do animal toxicity study. So okay, so we propose the spinal cord interact study, one in ruckus, one in MPI, crop CL, and then we have to submit the what protocol to FDA for approval. Otherwise, we cannot start. So they really control, <laughs> and we have to revise our CMC section. So this is the, the result. We, we did rocks in, in spear of GLP. Rocks can have the GLP. But we do that because YCR is he's the one who invented the, the spinal cord injury rats. And we want to be sure uh, that the rat has been good taken care of. So we worry about it. We could empty yeah, They never know, know how to damage the spinal cord. Maybe all die. All that would be a big problem. So we do it in, in parallel. And Vice Young went to MPI to teach them how to do that. And so 
this is the result from MPI, which is independent, uh, very famous, CRO uh, animal. Uh, they found two reps. This is an immunocompromised rep, FDA asked us to use. Uh, we inject the human monoclonal cell. So the two reps die. Not because of a, a, a product. They die before we inject the product, so that's fine. And the result is the study did not find any major effect of the treatment. There's no major side effect. There's no worrisome tendency of the transplant cells to the tumorogenic. That's what AFD wants to know. The cells also did not migrate from the inject site. It stayed there for 42 days. So we show that we have to find the assay method to test the human DNA, make sure it doesn't move. That was, that was tough. Uh, so that was uh, the except uh, nine was started out of the clinical study. The second project I want to share with you, we did it. We got a TFD approval for a chronic stroke using autologous, using patients' own stem cells, CD34. And, but the, the procedure is not used, is not patient friendly and also very expensive, so we decided not to pursue. We're going to use the monocyte to do the chronic stroke now. Uh, basically, we believe monocyte will go in, replace the cell, regenerate cell, and a tropic support, promote the regenerative mechanism, neurogenesis, and angiogenesis. Uh, yeah, I go through very quick on this one. Basically, this is a diagram to show angiogenesis and neurogenesis. And this is the instrument we use, the Clinamax, which is using a CD34 model or anybody to attract the CD34. Concentrated, and the patient has to stay at the hospital for six hours a, week, a day to circulate the peripheral blood. To, and before that, they have to inject the GCSF to push out the stem cell. So it's very painful. And after that, we have a concentrated uh, uh, CD34 inject to the brain. And this is a standard procedure. You, you don't have to train neurosurgeon, they know how to do it. This is the school will tell you how to open up the egg. And this is, you have to target the damage site uh, using the Okay, I don't need to push the bottom. I can touch the just a little bit come here. Yeah, yeah, the tank. And the other one also. Yeah. Yeah. You see the comparison before and after. Before is very cautious. It's not very stable. After that, after six months, okay, uh, it, it walked much faster. Okay. And just to uh, some, this is a very simple uh, comparison. Before, after the step lens, the step lens is the top lens, and the step lens is much, much longer. Here's much longer than that. It's about 38% longer. And the speed is 96% faster. It's much more stable. Yeah. This is a simple number comparison. And this is the peripheral blood stem cell, okay? And you see the beginning. And then six months to 12 months, you see the this side. The nerve does grow. This is control. It doesn't go much. And this is the same thing. You go in six months, 12 months, you see the, the cortical spinal tracts regenerate. The number, the fiber, the nerve fibers from 58 to 329. So it's a very strong evidence. And this is the important, more important potential. Yeah, once you have the before, when you the, touch your hand, but if you have the, uh, you, have the you know, the chronic stroke, normally your hand cannot raise up. But after the treatment, the, you can bring it with yourself. You can, you can brush your teeth yourself. You can eat banana yourself. And 
this is just to show whether it, it migrated. And actually, it doesn't move. It stays at the same places. Really, it doesn't move. Six months are still at the same time. So we don't see any migration. And this is an important finding. That's why I decided uh, we're going to move to, uh, we're going to stop this trial. Uh, we're going to go using the mono uh, nuclear cell. Because it is really age dependent. When you age over 60, age over 60, take much longer time to recover. This is group B. Group B is a younger, younger group to recover faster. And this is by NIH stroke scale. The same thing using European model scale score. The same thing. This is eight So for age over 60, it takes much longer, eight months to 12 months to recover, the back to normal, improve the quality of life. But for younger, it's three months to recover very well. So we're going to use a blood copula model nuclear cells, and which is age is zero. Inject, uh, right. hopefully they can recover in months yeah. or get much better, stronger. So the same thing is the basal intake, same thing. And so this is basic, I think the last slide here, yeah. this is what we're using is the target therapy for neurotic disorder. Our next project, chronic stroke, and we will, after that we're going to do the park, Parkinson. I think we believe the Parkinson we can treat as well. I think that's all I have. Thank you very much. Now open questions. Thank you. Interesting data. Can I just ask a few things that I, I wasn't really sure? So, so for the neurological disorder, are you giving them facts like umbilical cord stem cells or monocytes? We're giving a monocyte. So it's monocyte? Yeah. We believe the monocyte will go in. Yeah. and release the biomolecules. Yeah. And basically, it's a monocyte from the umbilical copula would express the neural growth band. Okay. So they, have, they are inducing neurogen, they, they are inducing endogenous yeah. neurogenic proliferation rather yeah. than the umbilical cord itself no. doing it. Yeah. And, and, and all of it is injected intracranially rather than intravenously. Is that correct? No. Or you give it directly. Yeah, directly. So directly to the head. To and, the brain. And the need for HLA matching because you wrote that the HLA matching. Four out of six. Okay. Why do, do the you need the matching? Four out of six. Why, why do you need the matching just for rejection or? What? Well, we believe we don't need match. Because that's why we focus on on the on the uh, disorder because there's no blood, no lymphocytes. Yeah. But there's no proof. There's yeah. no proof. You, you, you're yeah. allowed to do that. If any mistake, it will be a big problem. So yeah, we still have yeah. the match. By four out of six match. Four out of six. To the usual. Yeah, but we believe we don't need it. A lot of people we talk to, with Joy Kersman said, Joy but don't do any typing to the AQ stroke. FDA <laughs> approved. In the US, FDA uh, approved. You don't need to type it. Your AQ stroke, how can you do that? And what happens to these monocytes? Do they what, what, do they persist? What, what, what happens to them? They stay for 42 days. We have the data. They stay for 42 days. They die slowly. That's what I'm saying. They are not regenerated. They, they, they release the uh, molecules. So how many how, how many injection is? What? Why injection? Oh no, so, I'm sorry. It, it, it's a for the spinal cord. It's 6.4 million inject from top bottom, left and right. Four injections, but total is 6.4 million mononuclear cells per a kilogram. No, 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 no. per microliter. Okay. <laughs> it's a very heavy stuff. So still need exercise? Huh? I remember still need exercise now. Exercise? Yes. Yes, I, the great hack is the important part. Yes. I think the spinal cord injury success, we believe that our success is a uh, direct inject with high concentration on site, which you don't get it from infusion. We believe that's one of the reasons. Second reason is the rehab. The six hours a day, six week, a week, six days a week, six months. And that you need it because 
you need to build a muscle. Yeah. Build a muscle, otherwise you cannot. After you, this is a, the average, uh, average uh, head, the, the wheelchair, the, the wheelchair average is seven years. So they cannot stand up. You really have to do it really. Hard. 